So where do we kind of pick up with uh, with Jane and Darcy in the in this film? Well, Jane has uh, migrated to London, and uh, Darcy's followed her, of course, because she's her faithful intern. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Jane's sort of focusing on her work and trying to move on because Thora's disappeared for two years. <laughs> a jerk. <laughs> and um, Darcy's trying to sort of rally up her spirits a little bit. And Natalie, I mean, you get to work with Anthony Hopkins and um, and also, I guess, Tom a little bit in this one. Which and is, Renee Russo, too. Uh, yeah. There must have been fun new dynamics there. Yeah, it was really one of the, the perks of Jane getting, go, getting to go to Asgard was that all these actors who... I was like, yeah, I was in a movie with Anthony Hopkins, but I've never met him. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, such a bummer, you know? You're like, I made it. I made it. I'm in a movie with him, and don't even get to see his face. So, so it was just so exciting to get to, to work opposite him. And, of course, terrifying, but yeah. he's, he's so lovely that puts you at ease. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, this film kind of really passes the Bechdel test and the first one, too, mostly because of you guys and your relationship. I mean, what's been your experience of kind of the Marvel universe and, I guess, the way women, you know, are handled and things like that? Well, they, I mean, all the films, and specifically Thor, have really strong female characters, mm. um, as you say, like, who have all their own stuff going on, their own spheres, their own jobs and interests and whatever, and almost hit you in the face. No. Um, and uh, <laughs> and Jane especially, like, Darcy is awesome, but Jane especially, like, <clears throat> with her interest in science and with her passion and stuff, in the beginning, like, the first movie, Thor is almost just getting in the way of that. And so it's cool to see this movie when all of her dreams come true and she gets to go to Asgard and see all the things she's been theorizing about. Mm -hmm. So we pick up with a pretty relatable problem in that, you know, he hasn't called, he's vanished from the face of the earth. Right. He was in New York, didn't call. I mean, it was, was that kind of helpful for you being able to sort of, it's a fairly relatable beginning, I guess, for any character? Yeah, well, I think that um, the fact that in their relationship, despite him being this god and otherworldly presence, that they have real issues that we can all relate to, that you know, he hasn't really been around and he's been consumed with his, like, job or whatever <laughs> instead of paying attention to her. Um, and, you know, that she's been focusing on her work, too. And they have a long-distance relationship. She meets the parents. You know, there's there's things that everyone can relate to that um, make it something that you can understand as opposed to some, you know, fantasy. 